Samsung released the Galaxy S21 FE a couple months before the S22 lineup was unveiled. It was much delayed and long awaited. But if I'm honest, after the launch, I really wasn't that interested in getting the FE, especially seeing that the original S21 series were already heavily discounted. Now, thanks to channel sponsor Phonade, I was lucky to get my hands on the S21 FE for a couple weeks and put it through its paces. There are a lot of similarities with the original S21s and some key distinctions. So the question is, should you still go out and get a Galaxy S21 FE even in 2023? And what are the trade-offs, if any at all, between a flagship Samsung device and the fan edition? I'm Stefan for 868 Tech TV and this is my review of the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE one year later. Special thanks to Phonade for making this video possible. Check them out at the Crown Point Shopping Complex right here in Tobago for your smartphone and tablet repairs, cracked screen, battery and charging problems, water damage, software issue and unlocking and much more. Give them a call at 302-5176 or 332-2111 and follow them on Facebook and Instagram at PhoneAidTT or email PhoneAidTT at gmail.com. The Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is a flagship phone hidden in the body of an upper tier mid-range device. It's bigger than the vanilla S21 and even the S22 but not the plus models in either versions. It's firmly in the middle coming in at 6.4 inches. If you're coming from a flagship device, you will notice a difference in weight when you have the S21 FE in your hand. That's mainly due to the plastic back. Some may even prefer this option as it might even prove to be more durable than a glass back phone. Even though it is a bit lightweight, it doesn't feel cheap and while it's not as hefty as a flagship device, you can't really tell just from looking at it. It is protected by Gorilla Glass Victus in the front with an aluminum frame, all of this topped by an IP68 dust and waterproof rating. The white color which I tested did a good job of masking fingerprints and I assume the other colors will do too with this matte finish which is much preferred over a glossy back any day. The screen is one of the areas where you will notice a slight drop off in quality over the other devices in Samsung's flagship lineup. It's a 1080p Super AMOLED screen that has a 120Hz refresh rate. It's a typical Samsung panel with accurate colors that could be tuned to perfection. Viewing angles are great and whether you're watching content or playing games, it's a joy to use this phone and the whole punch for the selfie camera isn't as obtrusive as a notch. Hello Apple. Where there was a drop off in quality is in peak brightness. In direct sunlight, it peaks at around 800 nits with auto brightness turned on which will make outdoor visibility just that much harder on a bright day. It's running on the Snapdragon 888 in most regions and the upgraded Exynos 2100 in some. I had a Snapdragon version and this did not disappoint. Even with 6GB of RAM down from the obligatory 8 that's found in more higher end devices, I didn't notice any significant difference in performance. What I did experience was constant apps refreshing if I had been away from any particular app for a significant time or have tons of apps open at once. This even continued after using RAM Plus to allocate some of my storage to be used as RAM. Day to day performance is as buttery smooth as a flagship phone and it does handle heavy tasks well, even gaming. Up to the time I was using the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, it was running on Samsung's One UI 4.1 based on Android 12. Now even for what is supposed to be below the flagship phones from Samsung, almost nothing was left to chance. All the usual Android 12 and Samsung features that you've come to know and love or hate are here, including some that aren't even mentioned on the official spec sheet like Samsung DeX. Call quality and connectivity are great and I had no issues with Wi-Fi or even Bluetooth when connecting my Galaxy Buds or watches which I tested along with the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. For audio you have a stereo setup, one button firing speaker and the other in the earpiece. The sound is good though it does get quite thinny when the volume is pushed to its maximum. When it comes to charging, you will have to get your own brick as Samsung refuses to include one in the box. The S21 FE is equipped with 25W wired charging, 15W wireless charging and even reverse wireless charging. The FE is powered by a 4500mAh battery and by my account it does a pretty decent job. 
it definitely will get you through an entire weekly, especially if you're a general casual user and not someone who's using the device all the time. One area that Samsung definitely did not cut back with the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE in comparison to its other flagship siblings is the camera setup. While the camera interface lacks some of the flagship features such as director's view and single take mode, it definitely made up for it in raw performance. The quad camera system includes a 12 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, a new 10 megapixel telephoto camera with 3x optical zoom, and a 32 megapixel selfie shooter. In daylight, photos from the X21 FE 12 megapixel main camera are excellent. They are on par with the regular S21. Colors are punchy but accurate, with high dynamic range and a good amount of detail even for a 12 megapixel camera. Portrait shots are some of the best I've seen in comparison to other flagship phones. The telephoto lens definitely helps when taking those three times portrait shots. The 12 megapixel ultra wide camera does a good job as well, reserving colors and enough detail to make photos more than usable. The strange thing is that these cameras seem to perform even better in low light conditions than they did on the original S21s. Night mode also does a remarkable job of just clearing things up improving details and getting rid of shadows. 4K videos from the main and ultra wide 12 megapixel cameras are good but it could be a bit choppy. They do have great color accuracy and high dynamic range but sometimes it's just so unreliable it might put you off from actually using it altogether. At night it also does a better job than the original S21. There is enough details and even with the lens flaring the videos are more or less good enough. One of the key differences in the camera systems include a lower resolution telephoto lens coming in at 10 megapixel but with 3x optical zoom, an upgrade from the 1x zoom found on the 64 megapixel S21 series. This lens is even good enough to get a pretty good moonshot at 30 times zoom. Now it's on to the 32 megapixel selfie camera. This takes some beautiful and vibrant selfies in good lighting. Those photos are full of details and the dynamic range is superb. Portrait shots are also on par with other flagship phones as should be expected with a high resolution 32 megapixel shooter. The Wadi can shoot up to 4K 60 frames per second with a selfie camera. One downside is that there is no optical image stabilization, so I won't say that this is ideal for vlogging as your videos will come out quite shaky. When all is said and done, this is definitely an a camera system that can rival most devices out there, even in 2023. So there you have it, my full review of the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE almost a year later in 2023. You can pick this phone up and it's greatly discounted right now, even on Samsung's own website. So should you splurge and get a S21 or maybe even an S22 or maybe you want to save some money? and get the very reliable and capable S21 FE that still does most of what you need and also has a great camera setup. I hope this review will help you when making your choice on your next smartphone. Special thanks to channel sponsor PhoneAid for making this video all possible. I'm Stefan for 868 Tech TV. Feel free to follow me via the links down below on my social media, on Instagram and Twitter and stay tuned for more videos like these in 2023 and beyond. Don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment let me know your thoughts on the review. And also don't forget to subscribe. Until next one, be safe everyone.